Good morning, welcome for yoga practice. Today in this session, I'm gonna be focusing on some yoga techniques that can help you to develop your neocortex and your executive function. Those include things like attention, concentration, focus, the ability to filter in for what's important to you and to filter out what's not relevant to you. Now, if you've ever been working at your desk, for example, and you find your mind is wandering and somehow a craving is coming up, seems like it's in the side margin, but it keeps intruding more and more. This kind of practice can help you to resist that craving impulse or that distraction impulse and to maintain your concentration, your attention, your ability to be focused on a detail that is relevant and important to you. Now, if we take this into our life and recovery, being able to develop this particular kind of function for your brain also means that you can keep your eye, and literally it'll be through the eyes, you can keep your eye on the commitment that you've made, keeping your eye, as it were, on the target of your recovery the eye on the target of not succumbing again to craving or to impulse or reflex. And those things, by the way, craving, impulse, and reflex, they are in the limbic brain. And the neocortex, some people say in neuroscience, is the inhibitor. What that means is the neocortex can help you to inhibit the degree to which cravings, reflexes, and impulses take over. I prefer to think of the neocortex versus um, an inhibitor as what it's promoting what we're gonna promote. And from the neocortex, we also can add this kind of calming or soothing to the limbic brain and to the lizard brain. So let's get into the practice. And by the way, if practices on this channel are helpful to you, don't forget to click like on the video and also subscribe to the channel so that I'll be able to send you important updates when we have new videos coming out. As always, you can leave comments or questions below these videos, and I will come back to answer those for you. Thanks so much. Let's come into the practice now. So welcome for practice. We're going to get started with a short meditation. And again, a couple of things I want to bring in here will be some of the function of the neocortex, attention, concentration. And there's something very specific in uh, brain science. We call it the ability not to go to the distracting thing. And so this can sometimes be called impulse control or concentration. In concussion recovery practices, which is, I have a concussion, so I'm in the recovery community there. There's a practice called anti-saccades. And anti-saccade means that you're taking your brain away from the stimulus. And consistently, when they test my anti-saccade capacity, I'm failing. <laughs> so Saccades are where you go towards the stimulus, whatever that is. And usually it's on a computer screen, it's like a moving object and they want you to be able to track it with your eyes. And then anti-saccades are, you're supposed to go the other way from the moving stimulus. You go the opposite. You don't look at it. Sometimes they call it go, no go. So the, you'll have something in your ear saying, go, you look at the target. It'll say no go, you have to look away from the target. But those are called anti-saccades. So there's saccades and anti-saccades. What happens in our impulse control, let's say cravings, reflexes, and so on, we don't know how to go away from it. Once we have a craving, often we're down the rabbit hole with the craving. And so knowing how to not lead into the craving, how to use your anti-saccades, as it were, can be really beneficial because you can maintain your focus. It's a neocortex function. And so don't label yourself as not having willpower. This has little to do with willpower and a lot to do with the neocortex, which you can develop. Willpower is kind of, it's a, an effort to like override something versus partnering with. You're gonna be collaborating with your brain this morning. So take a comfortable seat, rest your hands out over your knees. You're welcome to close your eyes and lift up through the crown of your skull, find your place in the plumb line of your body. And so notice if I just say, let's focus on the movement of the breath. Does your mind just automatically land there and stay there? Right? Or does it have some distracting thoughts that you have to pull yourself back home from? So let's make the effort, even if the mind wanders, make the effort to come back.
And as we get started, just notice if you're able to make like one inhale where your mind is completely there during the inhale, can you get one? And if you can get one inhale, can you also get one exhale all the way through without a distracting thought and without feeling like you're forcing something to happen? And then you might try to get two breath cycles in a row, right? Can you concentrate on the sensation of the breath? It's an ever-present sensation. It's happening right here in the now. And the thoughts that might pull you away are usually not about the present moment. So try to get two breath cycles in a row. Perhaps by now you're getting a sense of the kind of state of your mind. And we're going to check this again. After we do a practice, we'll check with this very same function again. So please bring your hands to your heart. And then you may bow your head to your heart. Thanks for being here. So the practice we're going to do is uh, simple. I want it to be simple for you. Physically, I'm not saying that it's not going to have strong sensations, but it's going to be simple. And therefore, hopefully we can kind of train your mind while we're also doing the yoga, right? So please come down to lie on your back. If you have limitations with your hamstrings, in other words, they're short, it could be helpful to have a yoga strap close by. Okay, so as you lie on your back, go ahead and do it with the knees bent for right now. And check that you can take your arms out into a T-shape. Okay, and so you know where your arms are gonna land. Great, bring your head to center. You can take your glasses off. You don't have to have 100% capacity to focus your eyes. It's just gonna be that you're turning your eyes in a direction. So of course, if you can't see your thumb when you turn then put your glasses back on, let's point both thumbs to go up. So like you're hitchhiking <laughs> to heaven. And then as you inhale, rotate your head to your right and gaze at your right thumb. Now, keeping your eyes there, tip your knees down to your left and keep your mind and your eyes on your right thumb, even though other sensations are also happening. And then inhale, bring your knees back to center. And exhale, turn your head to center. Okay, inhale, turn your head to your left, keeping your eyes fixed at your left thumb. Exhale, both knees down to your right. Stay for the inhale, keeping your mind at your left thumb. And then exhale, bring your knees up to center. And inhale, turn your head to center. Okay, so that's like a basic framework of what we're going to be doing. You'll be gazing at one thing. There'll be a sensation on the other side. We're not going to move the mind away from the neutral object. The neutral object is your thumb. And we're going to help chaperone the mind using the ujjayi breath. So place the tip of your tongue behind the top two teeth. So the back of the tongue goes down in the back of the mouth. And let's make the throat a little more spacious. Think of it like hollow. And then start listening to a whispering quality in the breath. As you draw the inhale in, it'll almost sound like you're yawning during the inhale and the exhale, but a smooth, consistent pace for the breath. Okay, with an inhalation, rotate your head to your right, fix your eyes on your right thumb. Inhale your knees to your left. Exhale your knees to center. 
Inhale your head to center. Exhale your eyes to your left. Inhale your knees to your right. Exhale your knees to center. Inhale your head to center. Exhale, gaze right, turn your head. Keeping your eyes on your thumb, inhale your knees to your left. Exhale your knees to center, keeping your eyes and your mind where they are. Inhale your head to center. Exhale, bring your head to your left, look at your left thumb. Inhale knees to your right. Stay focused on the sound of the breath and your left thumb. Exhale, knees to center. Inhale, your head to center. Okay, again, we're going to take the exhale, head to your right. Look at your right thumb. Stay focused there. Inhale, knees to your left. Exhale, raise your knees. Keep your mind focused on your thumb. Inhale, your head to center. Exhale, head to your left. Inhale, your knees to your right, keeping your mind at your left thumb. Exhale, knees to center. Don't move the eyes. Inhale, bring your head to center. Let's go to the right. And this time we're going to stay in the stretch for some time. So let's put the legs together. So as you drop both knees to your left now, keep the knees and the thighs touching. Gaze at your right thumb. So your mind is directed at your right thumb. You could picture the inhale reminding you of the right thumb. And the exhale letting you take a mental seat at your right thumb. Even as your body is experiencing sensations of stretching, perhaps that's down the right side waist or could be in your spine, keep your mind focused on the neutral object of your thumb. Now exhale your knees up to center. And then inhale, bring your head to center. And exhale, turn your head to your left. Inhale, your knees down to the right. Put the knees together. And maintain your ujjayi breath. So the inhale kind of chaperones your mind to stay with your left thumb. Picture the exhale like you're just taking a seat, a mental seat at the left thumb. And then exhale, raise your knees to center. And inhale, bring your head to center. Okay, let's bring the right knee up to the chest. Reach behind your right leg with your hands. Hold the back of your hamstring. Stretch the left leg straight out on the floor. Okay, now place your mind at the back of your left heel. It's a, a pretty good distance from your head. <laughs> it's the farthest point you can get to. And it's neutral. So place your mind there. And you can use the breath to kind of chaperone your attention into the back of your left heel. And the exhale, you're like taking a seat there. You get yourself settled in like you've gone to the theater. This is the theater of mindfulness. Now, as you stay there with your mind, go ahead and close the eyes. While keeping your mind at the back of your left heel, inhale, raise your right heel towards the ceiling, whatever amount of flexibility you have in your right leg. Okay. 
Now, of course, there's going to be sensations in your right leg, and I'm not asking you to ignore them, but I'm asking you to prioritize that your thinking mind is at the back of your left heel. Trust your body to know how to navigate the sensations of your right leg. You're going to exhale, bend the right knee. Keep your mind at the back of your left heel. One more time. Inhale, straighten your right leg. Whatever amount, it can be straight. doesn't have to be all the way straight. And exhale, bend your right knee. Keep your mind at the back of the left heel. Now we're going to either put a strap over the right foot or reach up and hold your right foot with both hands. You could put a strap around your foot there. I don't have very long legs, so it's not hard to reach. I also have flexible hamstrings. Right? So now as we stay in the stretch for a bit, of course, generally speaking, we think of yoga as then paying attention to the sensations of the stretch. And those sensations are going to be there and you'll have a little extra bandwidth of attention to notice those. If anything painful were to happen, you would really, you would get alerted by your brain. But put your mind for now at the back of the left heel. So one way to know how deep should I go into a physical yoga pose? One of the ways to know that is like how consistently can you keep your mind focused at the back of your left heel? If you're making the stretch on your right leg too intense, if you're working too hard, your amygdala is going to get activated and it's going to draw resources away from your neocortex to try to get your attention that there's something painful going on. So place yourself in the stretch where your mind can stay at the back of your left heel. And then hold your strap or your foot with only your right hand. Open your left arm out to the side. And open your right leg out to the side. Just a few inches is enough. And keep your mind ushering you, your attention to your left heel, the back of your heel. So this is mind training, it's mindfulness training, it's concentration training, and we're building the neocortex. So you're going to have more leadership over things like cravings, distractions, and anxiety. It won't matter how flexible your hamstrings are we can't manage the, <laughs> the distraction of a donut, right? So don't prioritize like how flexible can your right leg be at this moment, but really how grounded can your mind be? Can you connect again to the back of the left heel and stay there? And with your next inhale, raise up to center. Bend your right knee, touch your right foot down and let's slide the right leg out to meet the left leg. And as you do that, notice the back of both heels. Now keeping your right leg stretched out, bring your left knee up. And transition like your mental spotlight is going to be on the back of your right heel. Okay. When you feel established there, use the ujjayi breath. You're going to inhale, raise your left heel, whatever amount of straight is appropriate for you. Remember, if you start getting into, let's say, comparison, for example, with me or with your former self or somebody else, Comparison and competition pull you down to your limbic brain. So stay at the back of the right heel so that you're developing something that's going to be more valuable for you, not only during your yoga practice, but in daily life. This is just one technique, of course. There are times where we put our mind into the sensation of the stretch itself. But this technique this morning 
Stay with the back of your right heel. And then exhale, bend the left knee. And then inhale, straighten it again. And slide your yoga strap over your left foot or reach up with your hands. And as you keep your mind at the back of your right heel, rest there. Notice if it's very distracting, if your left leg stretch is too great, you've signaled your limbic brain with an emergency. So you're going to be backing off of the stretch a little bit there to help promote the neocortex. And since your limbic brain really cannot all on its own calm itself down, it is helpful if you promote that restoration from the neocortex. Okay. Reach to the inside of your left heel or hold your strap with just your left arm. Open your right arm out to the side. And begin to bring the left leg out a couple of inches to your left. Rest your mind at the back of your right heel. To the best of your ability, use the ujjayi breath consistently as it's going to help you create the internal sort of trance of the mind. And with your next inhale, raise your left leg up to center. Keep your mind at rest. The back of your left heel. Place your hands behind your left hamstring, bend your knee, and take your left leg out next to your right leg. And let's put attention at the back of both heels. And then please bend both knees, roll to your side and come up to sitting. And then we're gonna come up to standing. I'm gonna use a practice right now that's based on those two poses. We're gonna kind of put them together into a standing position. This will add to the challenge, but in a good way. So we wanna be able to then extend the same practice in a more challenging circumstance. So I'd like to have two yoga blocks. If you don't have two blocks, of course you can get them. You can go to my nonprofit website. We have a, a place there to buy yoga props. That's called diafoundation.org, D-A-Y-A foundation.org. We have a link there to buy some yoga props if you need them. Okay, so in this situation, what we're going to do is place both blocks at the top of the mat, place your feet, and come into a forward bend. This is called Uttanasana. Now, if you'll put your attention for the moment on your right foot, you've got the back of the right heel, you've got the five toes of your right foot. Inhale, lift your heart and gaze forward. Bend both knees, step your left foot back. Turn your left heel down to the floor to line up with your right heel. And as you place your attention into your right footprint, press firmly down there and begin to straighten your right leg slowly. And keeping your attention at your right foot, on the exhale, bow over your right leg, relax the weight of your head. Now you can use the blocks to make the floor closer. You also have the option of putting your hands on the floor. It's not necessary to get to the floor. It should be what's comfortable for you. And even though the right leg might be having a lot of really cool sensations, keep your mind at the back of your right heel and the toes of your right foot.
with your inhale then, raise up to your fingertips, whether you're on the floor or on your blocks. Now I'd like you to press into both arms and start turning your pelvis to your left. Keep the right foot grounded. And then start rotating your hips. Okay, so first you turn the pelvis and the hips, then turn your lower belly, rotate your heart. This is called triangle pose. And then as you raise your left thumb and your left arm up, you can gaze up towards your thumb, but here's the interesting thing. Put your mind on your right heel, right? So here's the inhale. Now, of course, it'll seem like there's a lot of different parts of this yoga pose. And maybe you're, you're feeling, oh my gosh, a stretch at the outer hip or the inner thigh or the hamstring or the spine. And all those little pings that your mind might want to bounce around on will tell your, your limbic brain that in fact, this is challenging and we should be anxious about it or we should strive or compare or compete. So try to be very graceful as you raise up with your left arm. Really think about your right foot as a place to root your neocortex, your concentration mind, and see if that can help your body to start orienting. And that you get to choose how deep the pose is. You could make the blocks taller. You could stack two blocks on top of each other. And then appreciating your body for what it is able to do, reach your left arm past your left ear and come down to touch the left block with your left hand. Bend your right knee and float your left foot forward to meet your right foot. Take a few steps if you need to. It's okay to take five or six steps if needed. And then put your mind into your left foot. And as you inhale, root into your left heel, energize the toes, bring your heart forward. And then bend both knees, take your right toes back. Turn your right heel down so it's lined up with your left heel. And as you inhale, begin to straighten your left leg. And then exhale and bow over your left leg. Bring your hands down to the floor. As you energize your left leg, place your mind into your left toes, your left heel. Your hands could be up on high blocks or two blocks for each hand. Your hands could be on the floor. It's really up to you. And what you can sense is if your mind can stay at your left foot, you're probably making a choice that your limbic brain can agree to. If you're working too hard. If you expect too much of your body right now, your limbic brain is going to feel pressured. And by the way, working too hard and expecting too much from yourself, those might be body memories that you've had for a long time. So really practicing backing off when necessary is, is healing not only for your yoga practice, but also for your life. We're going to come up to the fingertips, whether that's on the floor or on the blocks. And as you press down into your fingertips, start turning your pelvis to your right. So press into your left foot. As you turn your pelvis to your right, then pick up your right arm. You could place your hand on your right hip if you like. And rotate to your right. Turn your low belly to the right, your rib cage to the right, your chest and heart. And then raise your right arm. Maybe you can see your thumb. And even so, I want you to press your mental focus into your left footprint. And see if you can have the breath be smooth and all of your decisions in your pose. To be there to support your brain this morning, not just to sort of stretch your body in a rigorous way. That rigorous method may end up being counterproductive in terms of what you could gain from your yoga practice with this inner leadership for the brain. Okay, so with appreciation for your body, sweep your right arm past your right ear and bring this down. And then bend your left knee and with as many steps as you need to, step forward. 
and come into Uttanasana. Okay, raise your hands to your hips, rise up to standing. Once you come up to stand, come into mountain pose. Okay, and in mountain pose, we get the chance just to bask. And basking is something really important for our brains to have the capacity for. So you had concentration, concentration. Now let your mind bask, relax your arms. Okay, so this is one way to have some leadership with your brain. Let's take that practice and consider now, how could it become deeply restorative? Let me show you one model for doing that. Uh, having done some practice, now what is deep restoration? So one model for doing that is, come onto your back, please. And as you lie down, okay, so you can cover up with a blanket if you want to, of course, but as you lie down, you're going to take the arms out to the side. This is like a starfish position. And bring your mental focus down to the backs of your heels. And see if you could encourage your mind to stay there at the back of the heels. And you can use a phrase to help. It's like having a little mantra. You can say, for example, my heels and feet are deeply relaxed. I am at ease. My heels and feet are deeply relaxed. I am at ease. This is actually a practice you could use when you're going to sleep at night. Of course, you can place your arms wherever you like in that case, um, but you could put your mind at the back of your heels instead of the mind ruminating on the events of the day and wandering around in the Ferris wheel pattern and making it hard for you to get nourishing sleep. You say, my heels and feet are deeply relaxed. I am at ease. And so this becomes your experience of Shavasana. You could stay in this position, of course, as long as you like. Um, and you can practice this Shavasana pose many times a day, actually, with the same mantra. My heels and feet are deeply relaxed. I am at ease. And it won't always be true that you're at ease, but you'll be using the neocortex to help your brain and your body consider that possibility.
Okay, so now we'll wiggle the fingers and the toes. Bend your knees. Please roll to your side. And let's come up to sit on the blanket. Take a seat like if you can. Sit, um, I'm sitting cross-legged on a blanket on the floor. Of course, if that's not comfortable for you, sit on something that is comfortable. Sit in a chair, sit on the ottoman, whatever is necessary. Okay. So then you just take notice again, what is the quality of your mind? And now we're gonna rest to just notice that mental quality. And raise your hands to your heart and acknowledge your efforts in this practice. Right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. Just a quick reminder before you go to hit subscribe and click like for any videos that help you. That's good feedback for me. And leave your comments and questions below the video. See you next time.